All right, everybody, beat you out here with Ray He's my timing master. I always depend on him when, I, when I'm always skeptical on doing some work. Uh, so today on BGL's Garage with the Patreon built VR6 Turbo, we're gonna time this and we're gonna show you guys on how to time it with a head spacer. There's nothing special about it, but it does change some things a little bit. So let's get to work because this is BGL's Garage. So um, we're going to walk you through pretty much the process of the VR6 uh, timing uh, chains. This has dual chains. Uh, everything you need is right here. Uh, this is actually a quick segue for Eurotuning. Might as well give you guys a heads up. This actually, this build is sponsored by Eurotuning and all our Patreon members. All right, so here's a quick word from our sponsor. Eurotuning.com, one of the best sites that I can think of right off the top of my head when I want to work on my car. And on today's project, since it's the Patreon built VR6, gotta go to Eurotuning.com to get our parts. And it's simple. I'll show you how to do it. You're gonna select your make. Since it's a Mark IV and it's a Jetta, so we're gonna go down to Jetta. MK499 to 2005. Now, what model? It's just a standard Jetta, it's not a GLI, with a 12 valve VR6 engine. And then we're gonna go to Go. And then everything you need is here. And what's funny, I actually just ordered an exhaust from uh, Eurotuning. I also ordered a bunch of other little goodies from them because, again, it, life is so simple. Just shop for your parts and everything that you need. Now, everything that we purchased for our VRT build came from Eurotuning.com. There are some parts that obviously we can't get there because Eurotuning doesn't carry a lot of custom stuff for uh, big turbo applications. However, everything we needed to build the engine came from Eurotuning.com. Thanks again, everybody, for watching this, and let's get back to work at Pinchial's Garage. So on the entire, we actually got our entire kit through Eurotuning. These are the gears that we took off of it to get you guys going on the timing setup. Um, this is the lower one. This is the oil pump one, and the, the one that controls the, uh, that runs off the crank. These two right here are the ones that run off the cam. This is the left cam. This is the right cam. You'll see the right cam has like these little weird um, shape on it. So that's how you know this goes on the right. This is just a solid straight gear with nothing special on it. This goes on the left. All the timing components, um, the guides and the tensioner. We have the other tensioner right here. Uh, this goes pretty much on the uh, timing cover. So we don't need to worry about this right now. And pretty much, this is the VR6. Now, this is the rear end. So the rear main seal, all that stuff goes over here. We gotta go and walk around to the front of the motor. And you guys have to make sure you have the harmonic balancer and the front main seal on here. Down here is a little tiny notch. Hopefully you guys can see that. Oh, there it is, yep. There's a notch right there on the right hand side. The harmonic balancer has a matching notch right here. You have to line these on dead on for your timing to make sure that your uh, your motor, the bottom end is timed to TDC. Okay? And the lockdown plate is a must have. Yep. <laughs> so this is the lockdown plate. This is what times the head pretty much. This is what makes the cams set themselves to the proper uh, timing orientation. Now the cams um, are cut in a way where they can only be locked down one way. So if you rotate them, uh, this won't the, the lock plate will not go in. Rotate them again until it slides in and match it on the on both sides of the cam. That's how you use the locking plate. Uh, there's only again, there's only one way this plate can go in. So this no wrong way of doing this, okay guys? Once you have it locked in, you find some 10 millimeter bolts and just uh, put them in snug. That way this doesn't slide around when you uh, start move, doing your timing. Also what's important is that when this lock plate is on there, don't tighten the cam gears with this on there because you'll bend the hell out of that. That's not, that's not designed 
to lock it down to tighten up the uh, cam gear bolts. You got that, people? Do not tighten these down. These are going to go in hand tightened. They don't go down torque to spec until everything is done. So the way that we're going to plan this out for you guys, we're going to work with the lower portion of the timing, and then we're going to connect the the oil pump to pretty much the the head to get the rest of the timing done. Remember, the cams are now locked in place. They will no longer rotate at all. So make sure you guys understand that. So here's one of the guides right here that have to be uh, set down right here first. And then you have these two. Uh, these are the slide pins. Now we're not gonna torque anything to spec. We're just gonna put everything on there nice and snug and then we will torque to spec everything afterwards. You'll see you got those two down and then here's the first guide right here. The get point. It up, get it up a little closer for no, up here. So you'll see right here, there's a little point. There's a notch there. If you look on this surface right here, there's a notch right up here and one down here. Make sure the letters are facing the left hand side. So up and down notch, letters on the left. And this only goes on one way as well. Mm -hmm. It's got a key guide. Now one big important factor when you're doing this, make sure there's no slack on this side of the chain as when you're doing this job. If you have slack, then the timing will be definitely off. So you'll see right here, Ray's holding right here the chain. And if I pull to the right, the chain has no slack whatsoever here. And the chain is now officially lined up with the notch here and the line that's behind it. Just like that. You see that, guys? Make sure you see that. That's extremely vital. There it is. Yep, there. There you go. Now you want all the slack to end up on this side of the chain, not here. No tension, all loosey, I mean, full tension, loosey goosey down here. Now Ray's gonna be installing the first bolt that holds this gear. This is the oil pump drive, okay? Plus the cam gear right here. This is a, one of the cam gears that this is what drives the two cams on top. Okay, nothing's torqued to spec, guys. Just remember, we're just putting them nice and snug, and that's it. We'll torque everything afterwards. I'm letting Ray do this because he already memorized the entire process, and I'm just watching him do it. So this is the lower, this is the actual lower cam chain tensioner, which he put upside down. <laughs> That memory you're talking about. Yep. <laughs> there should be two uh, Allen bolts that uh, hold this chain tensioner together. And then there's a locking pin for the brand new tensioner as well. So that said and done, remember, the harmonic balancer has to be timed first. In other words, the block itself is set to TDC. If that's correct, this notch should be perfect on the money. This chain should be fully tensioned with no slack, and all the slack should be down below. All right? Now we're going to be working with the next chain, which is the one that's on top. Very important. This goes in first. So the banana tensioner goes in first. And you make sure it's full on to the clock, full on to the right. Okay, he hooked it on that little um, slider that's on here. 
and then the uh, left tensioner goes on next. There's actually a really long bolt that goes on top and a little shorty bolt that goes down towards the right of it. And then there's one more uh, slide pin. Show them that one up close because they got to see that one. That one, that one's like a little slide guide and that one goes in this hole right here. Again, we're not torquing anything to spec because we're ordering all new hardware. Uh, it looks like the hardware kit that I had, I lost it. I don't know where it went, so I gotta do another one. The good thing is the hardware kit's very inexpensive, so it's not a very, very big deal. I don't have a socket for that one. What's up? I don't have a socket for this. Just put it in by hand, you don't need to be tensioned. I mean, tightened. Let me get 13, because the chain might be right over. Right? 13, right? See? See, Papa! Then just snug, where that's all we're doing right now. We're not again, we're not torquing anything to specifications. Alright, so this is where it gets a little tricky for you guys. So we're gonna do it and then we're gonna walk you through what we just did. So the left gear is a solid gear with nothing weird on it. Okay, once you're at this point, put the chain on. Do not put the uh, do not put the second gear in yet. Okay, again we're gonna follow the same procedure as before. No slack uh, on the lower portion of the chain. So this portion right here, this portion here should have no slack whatsoever. All the slack is gonna be on the side of the tensioner where this little banana tensioner is at. Okay, you'll see right here, there's absolutely no slack whatsoever on this side of the chain. The next step is, this is kind of tricky. Now, with that being said, with this gear, with, what was the notch at? Theoretically, it should go on, but with the head spacer, it takes away some of the slack. So you have to put the gear on as the chain goes on. Mm -hmm. So again, since we're doing a VRT, we have a head spacer, so that changes again. This is what changes, we can put that afterwards. Uh, that's what changes, not drastically, but that's what changes in this, in this uh, scenario. So you have a little notch in the back that you have to match over here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the, the, the gear on here. You're gonna put the teeth on and see if it lines up on your first try. I think it just did. It's just really hard. There you go. Just like that. It should have very, very little tension to zero tension. Uh, put this stupid thing back on. I don't even know what it does, but it's there. Oh, isn't the cam sensor there? Yes. That's what that's for. This tells. This is where the cam sensor tells where things are at. Okay. We're going to see this right here. This is where all the slack um, gets fixed from. Yeah, and that's where the, the timing cover goes on here. And this is where this pushes on it so all the chain... All the tension is right here, not over here. The slack is gone, tension here. And that's it, that's how you time a VR6 uh, motor. It's actually easier than a 1.8T once you understand where everything actually goes, which is kind of weird, isn't it? 
Yeah, kind of. Because at one point AT, mm-hmm. it's just like that one belt, just because you have to cram it on and slide it. It's such a nuisance. This one's just, it's so much easier. <laughs> do you want to tell them to pull the pin or do you want to wait until you do this? At Whoa. Least, at least when they're done, when you're done, pull this pin. Yeah. And that'll release the piston in here and that'll give it tension. Yeah. And then the oil pressure, that oil pressure will keep it constant, mm-hmm. constant tension. Yep. That one is just tension. No, actually, there's oil in there too. Is it? Is this hydraulic? Yeah. Oh yeah, there's a there's the there's the little hole right there. Okay. Oh, so the oil pressure feeds into here and mm-hmm. pressurizes it. Okay. Is that what that galley is for? I think so. That's a little pressure galley. Okay. So let me uh, move uh, move you out of the way so we can confer- show them up front how it got timed. Give you guys a close up of what we're going to be looking at. So give me a second here. Yeah, you do this over. All right. A quick breakdown. We're going to go on over to this side first. So, so make sure your cams are locked with your cam locking tool. Make sure you have your front main seal and your harmonic balancer. And you use the notch right here to time this correctly. Once that's done, once these this bo- bottom portion is timed, then you can work on your actual chains. Because now this portion is where it's supposed to be, and this is where it's supposed to be. You can install this gear first if you want to, it doesn't matter. And this guy. But you have to install this gear, the back one, this back chain first before you install the top chain. So the crank to the oil pump is first. And remember, we have to use the notch to time that. There's no timing marks on here. All the timing is done over here and on the other side. As long as that notch lines up in this corner you're golden there's no timing mark here your timing is here with these two and you'll notice the teeth are going to be slightly offset just like that that's how you know you got it no no slack on this chain no slack on this chain all the slack has to be moved to the to the tensioner so this guy here and this guy here and that is pretty much in a nutshell how you time a VR6 a quick reminder that there is a tooth with a notch on this side of the crank oh yeah and it's supposed to line up with the bottom of the block where the that is the timing mark I so I take that back guys <laughs> but I wouldn't rely on just that alone make sure yeah. both of them are lined up yeah this little you'll see there's an oddball tooth right here all the other ones are nice and straight this one is like uh, machined at a, an aggressive angle that one pretty much has to be perpendicular with the main cap like straight that's how you know you're also timed on this side of the engine versus the other side but if you have the front timing cover I mean the front main seal and the harmonic balancer it just makes it easier And that's it, everybody. That's pretty much uh, all said and done. Thanks to Ray Ray. And me. Pinch All right, Patreons. Let's get back to work. Because as always here at Pinch Garage, we're going to break, we're going to fix, and we're going to repeat. Peace out, everyone. And you guys have yourself a wonderful day. <laughs>